and we, when you start researching, coming to lesson during the week isn't really that important because it's a lot of self-directed learning. So it's really important that you, when you start researching, like you're going to have to do a lot of work outside of class. So at the moment, a lot of you aren't doing a lot of work outside of class. And if you want to finish research project this year, you need to start doing more work outside of class. So by the end of this lesson, all of you should have finished your mind map and you should be on to starting your research. So Taisha, can I just get you to come back into WebEx, please? Thank you. All right, so this is the Open Access College student section. So if you just click on the student link, it'll take you to all of these links down here. Now we're going to go over to the OSC library link because we've got a whole bunch of databases that you have access to that would be of use. Now, Chloe, can I get you to come back into WebEx, please? Because this is really important. Thank you. Okay, so we have firstly the library catalog. So if you wanna look for some books on your research project, you can have a look through there but I'm going to focus on the databases that we have access to that you can use to find information on your topic. So the first database that I'm going to have a look at is EBSCO database. Now, when you log in to any of these databases, the user ID is Martin and the password is library. Okay, so if you ever ask for a username and password, it's Martin library. Now we're going to look at EBSCO host, reference center, and we're going to click the Australian New Zealand Reference Centre. Now, if your question had something to do with science, you might click the Science Reference Centre. If it has something to do with history, you might include that one. Or if your question is centred around education, you might select that one as well. Once you've selected the appropriate uh, resource that you want to use, you click Continue. Now it's just a matter of putting in keywords on your research project that you think will help you to find information. So if, for example, your topic was on animal testing, you could, there's a whole bunch of information in here about animal testing. Now, if you want to look at cosmetics, you would put that in there as well to make it a bit more detailed. So time for a ban on, on testing of cosmetics. Canada, if you're looking at Canada or alternatives for taste, safe testing. So these are all different articles. Now, the reason why I'm asking you or suggesting that you use EBSCO or this database is because it has reliable, credible sources of information. These sources of information are more reliable and credible than stuff that you would find off a Google search. So use the EBSCO database because it's likely that you're going to find more credible, reliable and relevant sources of information which you're being assessed on in your folio. So it's really important that you learn to be critical about information that you find on the internet. Now, another one that we can use is the issues and controversies. So if you're, again, Martin Library, if your question is around an issue like, what's an issue that we can, let's say GM food, so genetically modified food. Now this has a whole bunch of uh, pros and con articles about genetically modified food. So this is, this one, issues and controversies is usually if you're looking at both sides of the argument in some, uh, in, if that's part, that's your question, if you're looking at whether it's a good or a bad idea to do something. So this may not apply to you, but it's another source of information that you can use that has, that is more reliable. So when I say reliable, credible sources, what I'm talking about is, uh, firstly, who is the article written by? Is there an author on the website page? If you can't find an author, it's probably not a very reliable, credible source because you have no idea who wrote it. Part of researching and part of your research project is to find sources of information that are reliable. If you're using Wikipedia, Wikipedia is not a reliable source. Anyone can add information on Wikipedia. If you were going to use Wikipedia as a source, firstly, what I would do is 
let's just say I would not reference the Wikipedia page. What I would do is they've got a whole bunch of footnotes in here. If you click on this, it'll take you down to firstly the, all these footnotes here take you down to where they actually got their information from. So this article here, I would actually click up and open that article and use that source of information if I was going to put that in my research project. Do not reference Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not credible or reliable. The sources at the bottom of Wikipedia are, but anyone can edit this information. Yes, it's monitored, but sometimes things do slip through the cracks. So you should never, I never want to see Wikipedia in your reference list, in your outcome or in your folio, okay? If you are going to use Google Scholar, sorry, not Google Scholar, you're going to use Google as your place of searching for information, you need to watch out for and use only specific websites. So if I'm looking at animal testing, I only want to find websites that end in .org or .com. So Animal Australia, I would use as a source of information because it's an organisation. Organisations tend to be more uh, reliable and credible sources of information. So the Herald Sun, for example, newspapers aren't that great for finding sources of information because often they don't reference where they got their information from. And this is going to take forever to load. Let's see if we can find another. So all of these are organisations, so they would all be fine to use. But this one here, firstly, it's written by a person called Annika Smethurst. Now, let's have a look about her qualifications because she's writing inf information about Uh, animal testing, but is she actually qualified? Has she done any sort of, if we Google her, what kind of qualifications does she have? So she's, according to Wikipedia, she is a journalist and it doesn't even look like she's, she just seems to be in every type of journalism article. She doesn't really seem to have any uh, specific interest in animal testing. So we don't actually know whether she's very credible or reliable. So I probably wouldn't use this article as a source of information because we don't really know that much. Um, she probably isn't a very good source of information to use. But if we were to look at say, um, someone that's based at a university who is doing animal testing, they're a more reliable, credible source of information. So don't look at blogs by people that aren't qualified. If you're going to use a website, try and find the author, okay? So does everyone understand that you have to be critical when you're finding sources of information? Do you understand what I'm saying here? You have to be critical because you're that's part of researching is learning to be critical and not taking everything at face value. If you believe everything on the internet, not everything, people write stuff on the internet that is not true. Like there is, okay, for example, there is a society in the world called the Flat Earth Society that talks about the belief that the earth is flat. Now, we have evidence, so much scientific evidence that suggests that the earth is not flat. So I wouldn't trust this source of information because what they're talking about is not true. So this one here, I, I would not use any of these sources of information because firstly, the idea that the earth is flat is just so ridiculous, it's not even funny, okay? So you do need to be critical of the sources of information that you use. All right. Now, 
when you come to lesson next week, I expect to hear a little bit about some of the research that you've been doing outside of class. The expectation is now that you are in independent study, that you are researching in your own time. If this if research project was in a home in a face-to-face -face school environment, you would have four hours of lesson a week doing research project. Now I only get you for one hour, which means those other three hours needs to be completed at home. Now you can spread that out throughout the week, but it, the expectation is now that you need to start doing work outside of class. And a lot and some of you have not been doing enough work outside of class. And if you want to finish research project, you're going to have to start working independently. Because in research project, I am a facilitator. I'm here to help you, but you're the one that has to do most of the work. Okay? Now, I don't think I'm being unreasonable with my expectations here. So when you come to class next week, I expect to hear a little bit about some of the research that you've found. Now, keeping everything organized is a really good idea. So you've got your sub questions. Now, if you've got a sub question, let's we should you should have firstly a folder on your computer somewhere that has is for research project. And you should have your first sub question. You should have a, a Word doc with your first sub question that is dedicated to information about that. So say you're in here and you found some information related to whatever your topic may be. Okay, so say you found, okay, I want to find out about tsunamis. I'm going to go to NOAA. That's an organization. They're very reliable source of information. And I want to find out a little bit about the tsunami story. I want to work, I know, and I'm really interested in the generation of tsunamis. And you read this information here and you're like, actually, that really relates to what I want to do for my research project. Now, I'm okay with you copying and pasting information into a place where you can then go through and change it later into your own words. I don't have a problem with that, but you can't plagiarize. So you can copy and paste now, but you need to then change that back into your own words later. Now, this information came from a website and you need to keep a record of that website. So you copy and paste that URL above and you might say, oh, this part here is what I want to focus on. Oh, and um, this little bit here is also really useful for my first sub question. Okay, and then you go to another source of information and you find that, well, let's have a look. Uh, National Geographic. Oh yeah, those, uh, uh, well, let's look at BOM, for example. BOM's an organization, Bureau of Meteorology, and it's looking at the, what happens when a tsunami approaches land. Now, you're really interested in that as well, but you're only interested in this first little paragraph. So you copy and paste that into your Word doc. Now, you also remember, need to keep the URL so you know where that information came from. And then you need to highlight the bit that you might be interested in, okay? This is how you keep track of all the information that you find so that when you start putting your outcomes together next term, you're not running around thinking, now I read something that was really useful and now I can't remember where I found it and I don't even know what the URL was and oh, did I read it in a book or a magazine? It's really important in a research project that you keep everything organized, okay? So you should have a Word doc for every one of your sub questions with all the information that you collect, okay? Does everyone understand? Everyone feel okay about what I've just shown you about how to keep everything organized? Now, if you're reading a book, you might want to put take some notes as you're reading the book. So if you've got a book about tsunamis and on page 23, you found some information that relates to your first question. So you would write that information down and you tell me where, like you keep a record of where that information came from, from your book, so that you don't have to waste time going through that book later and being like, where did I find that really good part that I want to put into my research project? So can everyone, like it's all about organization. You want to work smart, keep yourself organized. Keep a record of what you find that you want to use for your research project. 
for your research, okay? So it's now up to you to start working on this. And next week, I would like to see some evidence of something like this so that I can see that you are actually researching, okay? Now, that was all that I wanted.